Every year there are announcements of new exciting 2D music projects, and for every new announcement, a beloved project that failed to become popular fades away, is shelved, goes on hiatus, or is downright discontinued. In this episode, let's talk about a couple of projects that deserved and deserve all the love you can give them. Let's kick off this episode of Say You Lounge. Welcome to Say You Lounge. I am your host, Vanessa, and today's topic is four music projects that should definitely be given a second chance. Time to go down the memory lane to revisit 2D music projects that deserve a second chance. This is that time when you join me wishing these projects were back, or in case those are still around, that more people would check them after they got their second chance. Requirements to be in this episode. The project still has potential. Actually, it was never fully realized. The cast is pretty much impressive, featuring several top-tier singers. The premise of the franchise was, or is, interesting and refreshing. And of course, the project must be in a dormant state, or have only recently come back to life. After I mention these requirements, I bet you already have a couple of 2D music projects in your mind, don't you? Well, I bring you four of those projects to this episode, but you are more than welcome to pitch in your suggestions in the comments on YouTube. So let's kick this off by talking about a project that has left many fans in a mix of anger, sadness and frustration. Bandia Rose. I'm talking about, of course, Bandia Rose. How many times have I talked about this project on Seiyu Lounge, you ask? Not enough. Believe me, there are still people that to this day are coming across Bandia Rose for the very first time and noticing that the project is in a weird, dormant status. If you have followed this project, you've been through a roller coaster of emotions. The project kicked off with the support of Sony Music Japan and Aniplex. It had a big budget, a cast that mixed popular seiyuu with top-tier singing skills as well as professional singers and rookie seiyuu that ended up impressing a whole lot. It had some of the best rock music I had heard up until then in 2D music projects. It had a smartphone game that was a blast to play and that actually felt like playing the guitar. It was hard, but an incredibly rewarding game, with plenty of awesome rock tunes to play. The fans were, and still are, passionate, however, when the project launched, 2D rock music projects were still really far away from being considered mainstream or popular. In a way, you can say that now the expectations are not as insanely high as they were back then for projects with rock music at its core. There was the 2D idol craze in 2016, and every single 2D rock music project launching between 2015 and 2017 was hit with low popularity and, at times, disdain by fans of 2D music. <sighs> Looking at how things are right now, with 2D rock music projects becoming increasingly popular after the music industry in Japan, especially the 2D music industry, started to become saturated with idol projects and creators are starting to look for different music genres and concepts for their projects, it really is frustrating that Bandia Rose was launched during a time in which it was impossible for 2D rock music projects to thrive. There is one exception, Dear Vocalist, but the project always was more than music, bringing in fans of audio dramas into the mix, something that was or has allowed it to be consistently popular. So Bandia Rose was a victim of bad timing, and as such, Sony Music Japan and Aniplex Plus started to pull the plug from the project. 
It was noticeable that the project lost around 2017 and 2018 its big budget and was left with scraps to half-assedly wrap up the in-game story and shut the smartphone game down. Fans were livid. Many still are. It was sudden, it seemed prior to the game's cancellation and following silence from the project itself, that actually the franchise was getting an anime adaptation, which it didn't. I surely remember that as I was one of those fans that were excited about that idea. But no, the project announced the end of the game, not even making the songs playable offline, like how I too did, and all of a sudden, the only active band was Osiris, and even that didn't last long, with the project going on a complete silence on the music side in 2020. This is a project that had genuine care for the music and story. Not just a money-grabbing franchise, but one that genuinely loved rock music, paying homage to it through some of the best performances I've ever heard in a 2D music project. The cast was filled with rising stars, a couple of industry veterans and a couple of professional singers and rookies say you. The rookies went on to have good careers and are now also tied to 2D music projects. The rising stars are now stars of their own. The singers, unfortunately, are as underrated as they were back then, given how little exposure they have among Sayu and anime fans. Still, I'd love to see and hear more of Bandiarose, a project that I believe was yet to fully realize its potential. A project with a story as crazy as it was realistic and gripping. Yes, Bandiarose is a project that deserves to be revived. One of the best and most missed 2D music projects out there. One that fell from grace due to insanely high expectations by people that do not care about game or music quality, but only about revenue. Fly Me Project the original 2D Visual K project was ahead of its time when it was launched. The project was launched by Zarx and Pony Canyon, focusing on bringing a real Visual K sound by some of the most iconic bands active in Japan. At the same time, the lineups for both bands, Medicode and Drink Me, consisted of rookies or rising stars among Seiyu. The focus was truly on making Visual K music sound cool to fans of Seiyu and 2D music projects. And while it never ended up becoming popular, the project did achieve, as well as showcased, the vocal talents of two Seiyu that would become stars on their own, top-tier singers in the industry. I'm talking about Soma Saito and Daiki Yamashita. So what made Fly Me Project completely tank and disappear from the public eye without as much as a goodbye? The 2D idol units boom in 2015. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, in 2014, up until 2015, there was a boom of 2D idol music projects. In the background, silently, the industry was trying to make a boom of 2D rock music projects happen, but every single one of those, well, not all, as their vocalist is still around and is pretty popular in Japan, failed to catch some momentum and turn into a big thing. Most 2D rock music projects didn't last long, and Fly Me Project, unfortunately, was one of those. Tough competition, lack of investment by Pony Canyon and Zarx, a complex sound and a cast filled with rookies and up-and-coming talents ended up dooming a project that, today, very few people know about. This is obviously sad. Fly Me Project was a project breaking new ground for both Seiyu and 2D music projects. Visual K was loved, but not as much by fans of anime and Seiyu. 
this project put an awesome spotlight on some of the bands in the visual K scene and had a genuine sound. On top of that, the Seiyu didn't perform the songs as regular characters' songs. So Masaito and Daiki Yamashita requested guidance from Nightmares K and Alice Nine's Hiroto, respectively, and fully learned to perform in Visual K's trademark for baritone style. Up until then, Seiyu didn't care about going the extra mile to deliver a genuine experience. Most Seiyu perform songs for 2D groups with a definitive detachment, just like it was just another character's song. Well, Medico then Drink Me songs sounded like they belonged to real Visual K bands, and Soma Saito and Daiki Yamashita didn't spare any expense even going as far as embracing the makeup and fashion style. It was bloody awesome. The project focused on a balance between music and drama, however the times were different and fans could only listen to both the music and dramas only if they purchased the CDs, something that limited the project's reach. When people go all crazy about the visual K sound in projects like Bandiarose and Visual Prison, I can't help but think that Fly Me Project was the project that opened the doors for them, heavily inspiring them, but never get credited for that. Yumeiro Cast Ah, Yumeiro Cast, the mixed media project by SEGA that had a unique story and concept, musical theater, before it was made cool by A3, not to mention a fantastic game that no other music project has ever managed to copy. The sheer quality in the music by the bubbly Yumeiro company and the rival edgy Genesis was more than enough to attract my attention. Then the cast sealed the deal for me. Although Yumeiro company had a good balance between established seiyuu and newcomers, SEGA went all out and brought in the big guns for Genesis, making it a star-studded cast of all impressive singers among male seiyuu. It's not every day that you get Daiki Yamashita, Kenichi Suzumura, Daisuke Hirakawa, Makoto Furukawa and Soma Saito all within the same group. It was stacked with talent. Ah, SEGA, what did you do to this franchise? Well, SEGA has a history of mismanagement of their intellectual property, creating many projects with unique, awesome ideas, yet quickly ditching them because they seem to be unable to manage them all at the same time. And that was the fate of Yumeiro Cast. The next big thing was Ready Project for SEGA, and Yumeiro got the short end of the stick. And what happened was that the game was discontinued, Music stopped being released, besides a best of album and some drama CDs, and the game's rights were sold to a Chinese company that now distributes the game without the original voice cast and music, but has everything else the original one had. This was the worst case scenario for this franchise. Uh, once the rights were sold to the Chinese distributor, SEGA sealed the deal that it was done with it. It will never bring back the franchise because legally, SEGA can't do it right now. This is downright awful as far as game or project terminations or discontinuations go. Awful. A project with a cast that included Ryoto Saka, Natsuki Hanae, Toshiki Toyonaga, Yu Hayashi, Yutu Uemura, Tasukuha Tanaka, Soma Saito, Makoto Furukawa, Daisuke Hirakawa, Daiki Yamashita and Kinichi Suzumura. A project with a unique concept and game with a really good art style. A project with awesome music, with loads of quality in the production and performances. A project that deserved much, much more. Dynamic Chord I've talked plenty about Dynamic Chord on this podcast because this is a project I love a whole lot, 
and I believe that the music alone is bloody amazing, not to mention the visual novels that are among the most complete when it comes to character development, so I won't be diving too deep on this one. However, if it is your first time coming across Seiyu Lounge, or if you've never visited handedfeedshq.com, the website that is like a father to this podcast, then you may not be fully aware of the chaotic path this project went on. So let me get you up to speed about this project, but if you want to dive deep into it, do check the description for a direct link to the 30-minute video feature all about Dynamic Chord. So Dynamic Chord is a mixed-media project that was launched in 2014 by Honey Bee Black and Asgard that kicked off with visual novels, soon branched out to drama CDs and then to music releases, manga and even a stage play. When it comes to 2D music projects with rock at their core, Dynamic Chord was the first one to jump to the spotlight. With a unique set of bands, a major focus on its storytelling through rich visual novels and its high-quality music, Dynamic Chord was one of the best and most exciting projects around. However, a set of issues in quick succession between 2017 and 2018 ultimately made this project hit rock bottom. In 2017, an anime adaptation premiered, although met with tough criticism, and a smartphone game that was just a money-grabbing scheme that in nothing paid homage to the rich and well-developed source material was launched in 2018 and soon discontinued. Dynamic Chord literally went through hell and back and is still trying to regain its original importance among mixed-media projects, especially after being resurrected by its fans through a crowdfunding campaign. When I see the potential and quality the project had in 2014 and everything else that happened afterwards, it is impossible not to feel frustrated at the way everything was handled, with money and greed by its creators eventually taking the project through that hell. Now the project is slowly getting back to its feet, but the potential and the fanbase it had are no longer the same. Dynamic Chord went from a highly anticipated and popular mixed-media project in 2014 to a project that very few follow or know about, even if the quality of its storytelling and music are basically the same and the cast is, indeed, the same with Shota Oi, Shotaro Morikubu, Takuma Terashima and Takuya Eguchi as the resident frontman. Would I love to see Dynamic Chord back where it belonged? Yes. Will it ever recover from that rough patch? No. But I truly believe it deserves a second chance, beyond the one that Japanese fans gave to it by supporting the crowdfunding campaign that gave this project its own music label and control over the IP. International fans will still find in Dynamic Chord plenty of awesome rock music in there, covering various subgenres, as well as stories in the visual novels and drama CDs, well worth checking out. If this is the first time you're hearing about these 2D music projects, I welcome you to check their music, bands and cast. These are some of the best projects that got awful, abrupt endings or hit rock bottom and miraculously are still around, yet very few people care about them. At the hand that feeds HQ, the website tied to this podcast, you can find guides for Bandiarose, Fly Me Project and Dynamic Chord. These are extensive and in-depth, covering all the big events that have led to where each project right now is, at the same time that includes music reviews in case you want to dive deep into the music. You can also find on the Hand That Feeds HQ's YouTube channel the video versions that include music review corners. 
I hope you fall in love with these projects and decide to check their amazing music. For longtime fans of any of or all of these projects, I hope this was a nostalgic trip down memory lane and that yet again you're reminded of how good each of these projects were or are. Now tell me, which 2D music project it can be one that is no longer active or one that was inactive but without confirmation of its end, should everyone give a second chance? Let me know in the comments on YouTube and remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Sayu Lounge. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail say you and music related content. I'll return next week with another episode of Say You Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around. <laughs> <laughs>